hopefully the outside won't be too loud, but hey, you never really know. Uh, can you uh, clap for me? Thank you. All right. So if you have any questions, uh, uh, go with it. <laughs> you don't have any questions, really? All right. Well, I can... uh, was it based on an actual part of the moon? Um, yeah, so in partnership with NASA, we received uh, a ton of scientific data that allowed us to um, create a scientifically accurate moonscape. Um, so it, there is a particular section, I can't remember the name of it right now, that crater is, is an actual crater that you got to experience there. Um, but yeah, we worked closely with them to ensure that it was as accurate as possible from a content perspective. So I'm guessing that a lot of space agencies, and uh, thank you for uh, <laughs> persevering, uh, uh, a lot of space agencies are looking toward, have always used uh, sort of uh, the uh, simulation aspect of things. And uh, I was wondering how Samsung in specific got into partnership with uh, NASA here. Yeah, so it, it, this all evolved out of our um, uh, sort of continued push to showcase how VR is in a really immersive storytelling platform. Our whole brand is, a, is anchored around um, an ethos that we say, do what you can't, right? So our technology is meant to help people um, uh, break down barriers and unlock their potential. And so we've created a lot of 4D VR experiences that integrate motion uh, or scent or touch or other um, sensory elements to enhance the um, realism of the experience. And so we, we were discussing um, what else we could do to sort of stand on the shoulders of the previous work that we've done in space kept on bubbling to the surface. So when we initially reached out to NASA, um, <clears throat> they were really excited about the project and around the partnership, um, specifically for, I think, two reasons. One, because they really wanted to reignite the public conversation around space travel um, and specifically around the moon as we head up to the 50th anniversary of the moonwalk next year. Um, but also the moon has a really integral role in the future plans to have a manned mission to Mars. So the moon will be the first stop and then the, the launch to Mars will happen from there. Um, so for them this was really about inciting the next generation of astronauts. Um, uh, and so, you know, for us, uh, this was um, uh, a really exciting partnership. Myself and my team uh, got to go down to Johnson Space Center and uh, actually do astronaut training and test out the Argo system, uh, which is the system that NASA uses to train um, astronauts and to simulate both lunar and zero gravity. Um, so that, that like? It's an incredible experience, I have to say. Um, the difference between lunar gravity and zero gravity is quite robust. Um, you really have no control with lunar gravity, they, uh, with uh, zero gravity, um, which is why at the space station, things like that, they have to um, hold on and be clipped to you know, the, the space station or Hubble or whatever it is that they're working on. Uh, but getting to experience uh, Argos in person really helped us in terms of how we designed um, the harness that, that you're strapped into, the rigging system. Um, but also to ensure that the experience that we were creating was um, as close to parity, if not better, than um, what they had created you know, 15, 20 years ago uh, with the Argo system. So what are some differences between your system and the Argo system? So the Argo system um, has a back harness, um, and that's because they use the system for zero gravity as well. So with zero gravity, you have to be able to flip this way and go around in all sorts of directions. So their, their um, harness holds you at the waist and is hinged. Um, and it's, much, it's a much more elaborate system. For lunar gravity, you have a little bit, it's a little bit easier in that you really, you're, you're still gonna stand, um, uh, you know, straight up, but you're, exactly, exactly. So what happens is when you get in our rig, um, similar to Argos, the first thing it does is weigh you so that the system can counterbalance depending on how much force you are pushing off with, um, which controls how high you go and how far you're going in the VR content. So, computer on the side, calculating my weight, and then calculating how much exactly. resistance it should have exactly. to simulate. And so the, hot, the harder you were pushing off of the, the floor, um, not only the higher you were jumping, but also the further you were moving along uh, in, within the VR moonscape. Yeah. Um, so it's actually quite technically advanced in terms of the syncing between the content and the rigging uh, experience. When it comes to the content, how was the 
uh, design process and the coding process and uh, like the, the culmination of that, uh, how has that gone on? Yeah, so we worked with a company called Framestore that um, has done uh, a lot of the uh, the films that take place in space that you've seen. And so they compiled all of the scientific data that we received from NASA to create um, a completely realistic moonscape. Um, and we knew that we wanted there to be dramatic elements in the mission to um, sort of raise the stakes and, and uh, to get your heart rate <laughs> up a little bit. Um, and so if you come experience it, you'll get to see for yourself some of the um, some of the tasks that you uh, are supposed to complete within your mission, um, and some of the challenges, the curveballs that get thrown your way. So this is a whole experience at uh, 8370. Do you plan on um, perhaps uh, exporting this uh, elsewhere in some um, Yeah, capacity? so we actually launched the experience earlier this year in Pyeongchang uh, for the Winter Olympics, um, although it was a very different experience. Uh, we completely redeveloped the experience specifically for Sam Samsung 837 because we have this three-story atrium, this amazing three-story screen which serves as a fantastic backdrop um, to the whole experience and so we wanted to really um, have this be the best and the biggest execution of it. Um, but the experience is now uh, in several other countries around the world um, and we're still exploring whether or not we can bring it on the road so that we can get more people to experience it. But for now, um, the only place you can experience it in the U.S. is here at Samsung A37. Any future plans in terms of uh, these creative experiences uh, with uh, agencies or other uh, large enterprises? Yeah, so I, I mean, it, first of all, with this experience, our goal is to continue rolling out new missions and adding on new content as we build up to the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong's landing on the moon. Um, so stay tuned and keep watch on this particular space, but we're constantly talking to additional partners, um, uh, content partners, media partners, um, entertainment and gaming partners about how we can leverage our VR platform to create these in immersive experiences. So there will definitely be more coming in this space uh, in the future. Definitely cool. And uh, I should have done this at the start of the uh, interview, but uh, can I have your name, spell it out, and then uh, your permission that it's okay for me to be uh, recording you? Sure. My name is Zach Overton, Z-A-C-H-O-V-E-R-T-O-N, and you have my permission to record. Perfect. Thank you very much. Boom. And